Hello guys, in this video I am gonna talk about row echelon form and reduced row echelon form linear systems, elementary operations over linear systems, and Gauss method. First, I'll give you the definitions of the row echelon form and reduced row echelon form linear systems. Because to solve row echelon form and reduced row echelon form linear systems is easier than general ones. And using elementary operations and Gauss method, we can transform linear systems to row echelon or reduced row echelon linear systems. Okay, let's look at the definitions. We say that a linear system is in row echelon form if the number of zero coefficients at the beginning of each equation is strictly increasing line by line. We say that a linear system is in reduced row echelon form if it's in row echelon form the first non-zero coefficient or leading non-zero coefficient of each line is 1 which is an only non-zero coefficient of its column that is all elements of the column except 1 are zeros let's look at this example determine the type of following systems you see in the first equation coefficients are 1, minus 3, 1. In the second one we can write 0 here, 0x1, zero 0, 4, minus 3. Here we can write 0x1 plus 0x2. Then coefficients are 0, 0, minus 3. As you see the number of zeros at the beginning of each equation is strictly increasing. Because of this, the system of S1 will be in row echelon form. But here leading non-zero coefficients are 1, 4 and minus 3. So the second condition doesn't work here. Because of this, the system is not in reduced row echelon form. Look at the second system. Here the number of zero coefficients at the beginning of each equation is strictly increasing. Because of this, it's also in row echelon form. Leading non-zero coefficients are ones. One, one, one. This part is true. But in the third column containing leading one, there are non-zero coefficients, minus 3 and 1. You see this part doesn't work. Because of this, this system is not in reduced row echelon form. That's it. So the following reduced row echelon form linear system. As I said before, solving this type of linear system is very easy. You see here, you see from the first one, we can write x1 as 1 minus x3. From the second one, x2 is 9 minus 2x3. And x4 is 7. That's it. Taking any value for x3, we can define the solution of the system. We have infinitely many solutions. And the solution set will be this one. 1 minus x3, 9 minus 2x3, x3, and 7. Here x3 is any real number. That's all. Operations on the equations of a linear system. We apply these elementary operations on the equations to define unknowns. And if we apply these elementary operations to a linear system, then the solution set of a linear system doesn't change. As a result, we get equivalent linear system. 
show that the following system has the unique solution to 4 minus 1 using operations on lines. Okay, this is the first line. This one is second and third line. Here I am trying to get reduced row echelon form. So first I will try to cancel this coefficient. Because of this I will use this elementary operation. Instead of L2, I will write L2 minus 2L1. Then our new system will be this one. X1 plus X2 plus 7X3 is minus 1. Minus 3X2 minus 9X3 is minus 3. This is minus X1 minus 3X2 minus 9 x 3 is minus 5 then I will cancel this coefficient minus 1 because of this here I will use this elementary operation instead of uh, third line I will write third line plus first line and the system will be this one x1 plus x2 plus 7x3 is minus 1 minus 3x2 minus 9x3 is minus 3 minus 2x2 minus 2x3 is minus 6 We use these elementary operations. Instead of uh, second row, we write minus 1 over 3 second row. Instead of third one, we write minus 1 over 2 L3. Then our matrix will be this. X1 plus X2 plus 7 X3 is minus 1 x2 plus 3x3 three three is 1 x2 plus x3 three is 3 and then here I will cancel 1 to do this I will use this elementary operation instead of third row I will write third row minus second row and system will be this x1 plus x2 plus 7x3 is minus 1 x2 plus 3x3 will be 1 and here minus 2x3 will be 2 And here in the third equation, instead of third row, we write minus 1 over 2 times third row. From here, x1 plus x2 plus 7x3 is minus 1, x2 plus 3x3 is 1 x3 is minus 1 and here I will cancel 3 I will use this elementary operation instead of second line second line minus 3 third line from here the system will be this x1 plus x2 plus 7x3 is minus 1 x2 is 
4 and x3 is minus 1 Then I'll cancel 7. In order to cancel 7, I will use this elemental operation. Instead of L1, L1 minus 7 L3. The system will be x1 plus x2 is equal to 6 x2 is 4 x3 is minus 1 then I'll cancel 1 in the first equation instead of L1 I will write L1 minus L2 and I'll get this system x1 is 2 x2 is 4 x3 is minus 1. The system is in reduced ratio form. As you know, the system is equivalent to this one. Because of this, the solution of this system will be 2, 4, minus 1. If you want, you can write the solution as a solution set. Okay, that's all. Gauss method using pivoting or through pivoting. Okay, suppose that we have a linear system S and A is the matrix of coefficients, B is the matrix of the right hand side. You know from the matrices, in order to define the row echelon form of the matrix, we use the Gauss method. But here, using the Gauss method, we will define reduced row echelon form of a system. Look at here. Gauss method consists of transforming the matrix of A to its row echelon form and then reduced row echelon form. You see here we say using pivoting. The objective of pivoting is to make an element above or below a leading one into a zero. You know in order to obtain reduced row echelon form we will use row elementary operations. And here row elementary operations should be applied simultaneously on A and B. That is that's on the code augmented matrix. Look at here, we expand matrix of coefficients to the matrix of B. And this matrix is called augmented matrix of S. That's it. Let's look at this exercise. Solve the following system using Gauss method. First, we define the augmented matrix AB is equal to the matrix of 0, minus 1, 2, 13, 5, 1, minus 2, 3, 17, 4, minus 1, 3, minus 3, minus 20, and minus 1. This one. You know here, using the Gauss method, we must define the reduced row echelon form of this system. To do this, first we define the row echelon form of the matrix A and then its reduced row echelon form. Passage to row echelon form. This passage is the same as 
Chaos method for matrices. First iteration. Step 1. From the Gauss method for the matrices, you know that first we look at the first column. First column consists of non zero elements. Because of this, we look at the first element of the first row. This is zero. Then we assign zero to the pivot. It's not true. In this case, we take the first element of uh, the second row as a pivot. Pivot is 1 because a 1, 1 is 0. And then we replace the second row and first row and move to step 2. In this case, our matrix will be this 1, minus 2, 3, 17, 4, 0, minus 1, 2, 13, 5, minus 1, 3, minus 3, minus 20, minus 1. This matrix. You know in step 2, we must cancel the first elements of 2nd row and 3rd row. Step 2. First element of the 2nd row is 0 in our example. So we cancel the first element of the 2nd row. And in order to cancel the first element of the 2nd row, we use this elementary operation. Instead of L3, we write L3 plus L1. Then our matrix will be the matrix of 1, minus 2, 3, 17, 4. 0, minus 1, 2, 13, 5. 0, 1, 0, minus 3, 3. And we move to step 3. We assign the first element of the first row to a pivot. Pivot is 1. It's different from 0. Because of this, we remove the first row and first column of this matrix. And take this submatrix. Our submatrix will be this. The matrix of minus 1, 2, 13, 5, 1, 0, minus 3, 3. Then we move to second iteration. Step 1. First we look at the first column of this matrix. There are non zero elements. Then we assign the first element of the first row to a pivot. Is minus 1, which is different from 0, it's true. Then we move to step 2. Here we must cancel the first element of the second row. To do this, we use this elementary operation. Instead of L2, we write L2 plus L1. From here, our new matrix will be minus 1, 2, 13, 5, 0, 2, 10, 8. This one. Then we move to step 3. 
we consider the first element of the first row pivot is minus 1 is different from 0 yes it's true but here this matrix this one is in row echelon form because of this we stop here and the row echelon form of the matrix A will be this one minus two three seventeen zero minus one two thirteen zero zero two ten this one and then we find the reduced row echelon form of this matrix let's use the notation b prime for the last column of the new augmented matrix 4 5 8 and then we find the reduced row echelon form of the matrix A you know to find the reduced row echelon form we will use the corresponding elementary operations so as I said at the beginning we must apply these elementary operations to the new augmented matrix this one 1 minus 2 3 17 4 0 minus 1 2 13 5 0 0 2 10 8 this okay let me passage to reduce the echelon form As you know, we must find the reduced row echelon form of this part. Step 1 First, we replace the first coefficients with ones. Because of this, we use these elementary operations. Instead of L2, we write minus L2. And instead of L3, we write 1 over 2 L3 from here our new matrix will be this 1 minus 2 3 17 4 0 1 minus 2 minus 13 minus 5 0 0 1 5 Four. Then we move to step two. In step two, we must cancel the elements of the columns containing leading ones. These elements minus two, three, minus two. We start from the last column. First, we cancel minus two, then three, and then minus two. Okay, we use these elementary operations. Instead of L2, we write L2 plus 2L3. Instead of L1, we write L1 minus 3L3. From here, our new matrix will be this. 1 minus 2, 0, 2 minus 8 0 1 0 minus 3 3 0 0 1 5 4 and then we use this elementary operation instead of L1 
we write L1 plus 2 L2 to cancel minus 2. From here, the matrix will be this 1, 0, 0, minus 4, minus 2, 0, 1, 0, minus 3, 3, 0, 0, 1, 5, 4. You see this matrix is in reduced row echelon form and this is the reduced row echelon form of A. That's it, we obtain the reduced row echelon form of A. Then we stop here. This matrix is the matrix of coefficients of a linear system. And this part is the right hand side of the system. Then our new system will be this. x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 minus 4x4 is minus 2, 0x1 plus x2 plus 0x3 minus 3x4 is 3, 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 5x4 is 4 or this system x1 plus 5x4 is minus 2 x2 minus 3x4 is 3 x3 3 plus 5x4 is 4 this linear system will be our result it's the reduced rational form of s We know that this system is equivalent to the system of S. Because of this, the solution set of this system will be the solution set of S. From here, x1 will be minus 2 plus 4x4, x2 will be 3 plus 3x4 x3 will be 4 minus 5x4 by fixing the value of x4 we can define the value of x1, x2, x3 ok then the solution set of s will be this minus 2 plus 4x4 four four. this is x1 x2 is 3 plus 3x4 three x3 three is this 4 minus 5x4 and x4 here x4 is any real number that's all as you see here, we applied the Gauss method to find the reduced row echelon form of the system S. Then using its reduced row echelon form, we found its solutions. That's all. Let's look at this theorem. This theorem says that 
Every homogeneous linear system of equations with the number of unknowns strictly bigger than the number of equations has an infinite of solutions. That's it. Okay, let me give you uh, another information about homogeneous linear system. You know that uh, in homogeneous linear system, the right hand side is zero. Because of this, it's very convenient to use Gauss method for solving homogeneous linear systems. In this case, the last column of the augmented matrix will be zeros. And this column will not change for any elementary operations. Therefore, in that case, you don't need to take augmented matrix. You can just take the matrix of coefficients and apply Gauss method. That's all. See you guys next lesson.